Officials in the European Union are attempting to impose charging regulations, and Apple, obviously, is unhappy with these changes. According to a recently proposed European Commission plan, USB-C would become the sole standard for wired smartphone charging, because proprietary standards such as Apple's Lightning hinder users from recycling cables and many other peripherals. In fact, the project would extend beyond phones to include headphones, portable speakers and tablets, among other gadgets. To stay updated on this topic, please subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications, we post new videos every day. In response, Apple contends that the idea will restrict innovation, but Anna Cavazzini, chair of the European Parliament's Consumer Protection Committee, points out that if something better than USB-C emerges, the regulations will change. Apple isn't facing an immediate threat, either, because standardization isn't expected to take effect until 2024 at the earliest. There doesn't appear to be much possibility of Apple influencing EU authorities, even if it's for the better of the tech industry. This means Apple is fighting an already lost battle, especially as there are few compelling reasons to stick with Lightning cables. Let us now evaluate the connectivity capacities of Lightning and USB-C. For starters, Apple is gradually ditching the Lightning format. The iPhone 13 range is now the company's sole flagship product that has a Lightning port. Except for the 10.2-inch affordable model, every iPad now uses USB-C, bolstering their laptop replacement claims. Audio-related items such as AirPods, the iPod Touch, and the Powerbeats Pro still have Lightning, although Beats Flex and Beats Studio Buds have made the move. This is likely due to the fact that the Beats brand caters to both iOS and Android consumers, the latter of whom have come to expect USB-C. On a technological level, the benefits of switching are clear. Improvements in devices and connectors have barely kept Lightning alive. You can charge an iPhone 13 at up to 25W with a Lightning to USB-C adapter, which is more than the Pixel 5's 18W, but Apple hasn't indicated if Lightning is capable of more. Over USB-C, Android phones frequently support at least twice that wattage. The Xiaomi Mi Mix 4's charger is rated at a whopping 120 watt, which means that a full charge may be completed in as little as 21 minutes, and that's without using boost mode. For future USB-C devices and cables, the USB Promoter Group has already approved charging up to 240 watt. So we can conclude that the iPhone's lightning port is slower than its USB-C counterparts when it comes to charging and data transfer. Even the quickest lightning ports are limited to USB 3.0 speeds when it comes to data, and some may still be at 2.0. If Apple was more transparent with technical specifications, we'd know for sure. That's still a 5 gigabits per second or less maximum at 3.0 compared to the 10 gigabits per second on many specialized USB-C connections. Some USB 3.2 devices are now capable of 20 gigabits per second, and if you have USB 4, the maximum speed is 40 gigabits per second. Nothing better exemplifies Apple's ridiculous position than the iPhone 13 Pro. Apple ProRes codec, which is popular for TV and cinema quality work, will soon be available on 256 GB storage configurations. However, iMore points out that a single minute of ProRes in 4K HDR consumes 6 GB, thus transferring 30 minutes of film to a Mac or PC at USB 2.0 speeds will take up to 50 minutes, or roughly 5 minutes at USB 3.0 speeds. A 10 GB per second USB-C connection would cut the process down to just over 2 minutes. In terms of the European context, the EU is correct in claiming that proprietary standards are bad for e-waste. Although Lightning works with most USB ports and adapters, many cables, docks, and other accessories become worthless upon switching to Android. Switching to an iPhone, on the other hand, may find that their USB-C purchases are still useful, even if it's with other devices. Whether or not the EU proposal reduces e-waste by roughly a thousand tons annually, there's no denying that waste will be reduced. Apple's adamant stance on Lightning runs counter to the company's otherwise admirable environmental goals, including as its objective of using as many recycled materials as possible and lowering the amount of packaging it sends out in the first place. 
It made a big issue about taking charging adapters out of its boxes, claiming the same environmental benefits. It's a little hypocritical to avoid USB-C. In the end, Apple and the EU may find themselves in a short-term conflict. Wireless charging is becoming more prevalent on smartphones, and it's widely speculated that iPhones will be devoid of connectors entirely in a few years. Of course, Apple's technology may need to be upgraded. 15 Watt Although MagSafe charging isn't as fast as USB-C, and even Wi-Fi 6 data is slower than USB-C, it's possible that Apple will be ready to ditch USB-C entirely by 2024. iPhones have long been QI compatible, even if the EU dictates that wireless charging standards become universal as well. With MagSafe, they simply charge faster. So, why is Apple clinging to Lightning? When we analyze the company's history and stated arguments against the EU, the major motivation becomes clear – control. Apple, more than most tech companies, prefers to adopt whatever technology it wants, when it wants, and frequently disregards public opinion. For the iTunes Store, Apple requires AAC files, while customers who desire lossless music are urged to subscribe to Apple Music or must do without. There's still no straightforward method to load custom fonts or icons in iOS, and iPhones didn't get home screen widgets until 2020, a full 12 years after Android, not to mention the App Store's strict and sometimes problematic rules. So do you think Apple will ever use the USB-C port for their iPhones? Please let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos every day.